Within the crisis, there is opportunity. Uh, but when you talk about a, a new structure, new, I'm, I'm not sure you've used the term new world order. I mean, what is it? Is it simply a world order that's defined by new interest uh, and new mutuality of interest? Well, that's certainly how you have to start. Uh, and I know the view that uh, you start by converting the whole world to our political philosophy. I don't think that can be done in one or two terms of an administration. That's a historic process that has its own, uh, that has its own rhythm. The tipping point in Romania. We're seeing the biggest protests in Romania since the fall of communism, this over a decree. Weeks of protests against the government after cabinet passed a decree that could see politicians convicted of corruption walk free. To borrow a phrase from the historian Robert Kagan, this is the world that America made. It is also the world that I fear is now in danger of being unmade. The international order that America created is now under unprecedented threat from multiple directions. It's the worst fighting in months. Deadly violence between Ukrainian troops and pro-Russian rebels. Today, President Trump imposed new sanctions on Iran after a ballistic missile test. We will never repeat, never, and get the same statement from those who are complaining. Never use them against anybody, unless in self-defense. And we're sure that nobody has the guts again to attack us. They've all said that we're not going to answer to any threats. I mean, they don't, uh, they don't speak anything but force. This is a country where they have state-sponsored marchers in the streets where they claim, you know, death to America. Security advisor Michael Flynn said, the days of turning a blind eye to Iran's hostile and belligerent actions toward the United States and the world community are over. And as we are all aware that following World War II, a world order was established, which has held for basically the last 70 years. Do you believe that that new that world order is now under more strain than it's ever been? I think it's under the biggest attack since World War II, sir. Americans should not take the current international order for granted. It did not will itself into existence. We created it. Likewise, it is not naturally self-sustaining. We have sustained it. If we stop doing so, it will fray and eventually collapse. And the State Department announced today that 60,000 visas were revoked in the first week of the executive order, which bans travelers from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. This is video of protests turning violent in California. Some rioters set this fire that you see right there outside the University of California, Berkeley. They were protesting controversial alt-right speaker Milo Yiannopoulos. The Breitbart News editor was set to speak on campus, but the school had to cancel his speech because of the chaos there. Are you optimistic a global system can happen it, from what it, we've heard so far? It, it, it could happen and in fact is in the works. Well, I have described him as, as a, an imposter and con man and, and a would-be dictator. Uh, <laughs> but he's only a would-be dictator and he would be dictator if he could get away with it, but he won't be able to. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau welcomed those fleeing war and persecution, saying that Canada would take refugees banned by the United States. We are also learning more tonight about the terror north of the border. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called the shooting a terrorist attack. The attack came only a day after Trudeau promised that Canada would welcome refugees temporarily banned by the United States. Tonight, French police raiding locations around Paris. An ongoing investigation after a terror attack at perhaps the world's most famous museum. As bewildered tourists looked on. I wonder if it's a training exercise. 
but it wasn't. Inside, a man with a machete in each hand lunged at soldiers, shouting, God is great in Arabic, before he was shot five times. A man carrying a machete and shouting, Al Akbar. Security is at its highest level in France because of a series of attacks which have killed hundreds of people over the past two years. Starbucks chairman and CEO saying that the coffee chain will give jobs to 10,000 refugees over the next five years. The CEO from Starbucks issued a statement saying that the company will be hiring immigrants in stores all around the world. Well, there's two things I can't stand. One is willful ignorance and the other one is political grandstanding. And that's what Mr. Starbucks is doing. Now, as far as hiring 10,000 refugees, yeah, I believe he should hire 10,000 veterans. They're the ones that made it possible for Starbucks to be where they're at right now. But more importantly, I think what Mr. Starbucks is saying is, you know, I got to hire 10,000 more people because he believes in Donald Trump. A Dallas ISD high school art teacher is on administrative leave after posting a video on social media of her doing what seems to be staging a mock assassination of President Donald Trump. Die! The video shows her shooting at an image of President Trump with a water gun. You heard her yelling, die, and it appears to be in a classroom. Now to a call for assault charges against a high school teacher in southeast Houston. The parents of a teen say a teacher assaulted their child at Sterling High School. Well, a Sterling student claims his teacher not only punched him, but also offered him and other students extra credit if they demonstrate against Donald Trump. He said during some horseplay in class, he told another student, quote, that's gay. He says his teacher responded by accusing him and Christians in general of being homophobic. He says a teacher punched him in the chest while he was trying to explain what he'd said to his father on his cell phone. Robles was disappointed when the university canceled it. I think uh, the people watching tonight should look at the people protesting and look at what color hat they're wearing. It's certainly not red. But as you can see, she was wearing red. As we continue the interview, Kiara Robles paid for it. Are you surprised, uh, ma'am? In a free country. With free speech in this iconic place, no matter what a person's politics, that happened. Ma'am, are you all right? Yes, I am. Thank you for asking. Masked rioters were seen attacking people, hitting them already on the ground or even as they ran away. But one witness happened to be in the right place at the right time. Organized fighting is what he loves, not street fighting. But he says he had no choice but to intervene. Then all of a sudden I see some guy running, getting chased by a mob of like 15 people. You know, they're 15, 20 people. They're chasing him down, hitting him with sticks, with their, their faces covered. The guy was already covered in blood. He'd already been beat up. Shield says no one did anything to stop it. So I ran over and uh, started fighting the people off. You know, like 20 people jump a guy. I'll come yeah, okay. a little bit half you, man. It's not okay. In this video, Shields is seen confronting the masked men who claimed the victim was hit because he was a Nazi. After the first fight, I knew lots more people were getting attacked. You know, I ran out to try to get the police and the police, you know, they even recognized me and they're just like, yeah, it's, uh, we're not really going in there. You know, I don't know if they were cowards or if they had an order to stand down, but it was a, it was a disgrace to see a police force stand down like that. What would you call this age, this opportunity, this moment? I, uh, I, it's, a, it's a good question. I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't condensed it into uh, a, a, a and ultimately, the goal of one world government is to create a a, a, a political, a uh, economic, and spiritual dimension upon the planet that is all focused upon one thing. Uh, create. Uh uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. That you have a series of megalomaniacs, people whose ultimate goal is to rule the entire world and control it as best they can. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. There has never been a time in human history like the time we are in right now, especially with regards to these kind of issues. Because we are living in the first time in human history 
where a literal fulfillment of the idea of one world government and one world economy and one world religion has even been on the table for discussion. David Rockefeller said, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order, global terrorism. That is changing the functioning of military and police forces into a cooperative effort centered around the organizational format of the United Nations. Appointed mayor of a small town in Collin County sent an open letter to her citizens explaining she's transgender. The town had known Jess Herbst like this, a man for years, but now she's living as a woman. That we will see the curtain opening wider and wider and the mystery of lawlessness will not be quite so mysterious anymore but it'll be evidently played out before us. A new chapter in the long history of the Boy Scouts of America. Yeah, girls who identify as boys can now be part of the program. Well, the Golden State taking steps to be the first in the nation to add a new gender option on its driver's licenses. And we begin to embrace these things, not realizing that this is the mystery of lawlessness spreading through a culture. And we begin to simply become conformed to the temperature of the world around us. Keep in mind, when we look at the changes even in our own culture, going from a, a biblically based culture and morality and legal system to where we are going today, and you say, what's going on? The Bible says it's the mystery of lawlessness. What we're living in a culture, not just here, but it's sweeping the globe of throwing off the will of God because we see them as shackles and restraints to living the way we want to live our lives. So that that which once was unthinkable now has become doable and even desirable. It's the mystery of lawlessness. And what it means simply is the curtain is now opened and what has been hidden will suddenly become obvious and revealed. But here's the thing that concerns me. If we are not watching, if we're not becoming informed and understanding where these things are going, Paul's or Jesus' warning again in Luke was, you're going to be deceived. It was the great Thomas Jefferson who said, the God who gave us life gave us liberty. Jefferson asked, can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have removed a conviction that these liberties are the gift of God?